Everywhere you go, you can hear the laughter Little kids playing, chasing after Innocence shines bright like a built-in light With their giggles and smiles, everything feels right Oh, the joy of little children filling up the air Their happiness contagious, nothing can compare just watch them run and play, get free and wild. Oh, the joy of little children. Hello, everybody. Hello again. Hello, Millie. Hello, Annabella. Hello, Garrett. Welcome, welcome. Dania, Berry Sports Highlight. Hello. Janice Cantrell. Karma, hello. Reality wins. Hello, hello, hello. Rhonda, 1960. Bonnie's Journey. Welcome, everybody. Bob G. Hello, hello. Tam here. Good to see you, Tam. I'm glad to see everybody. I know people's got some stuff going and running tonight, but y'all know me. I have to hit the hay in a little bit. <laughs> I got a long day tomorrow. Lori, hello, welcome, welcome, Yellow Jelly Bean. Yellow Jelly Bean, what a cute picture. Chris H., hello, hello, everybody, welcome. Pine Needles, hello, hello, hello. I sent your uh, picture over. I haven't got a response yet, but we'll see, okay? I did do what I said I would do. Hello, Luminous. Everybody coming in, got the memo. Oh, hey, new subscriber, thank you. Thank you, everybody, welcome. CC, I love to see everybody coming in. I'll try not to make this too long, but um, I did want to come back on here tonight because uh, Nancy Grace had dropped a few things, and um, Victoria, good to see you, hon. Elizabeth, Lily, hey, sweet Lily, and Ginger Snap. Nancy Grace had dropped a few things, and I just wanted to uh, go over a few things and talk about it. I found a few things interesting. Seth did a Nancy Grace interview. As we know, Sebastian is still missing. This is the original flyer right here. I always like to read this as it is on the Amber Alert because I like to go by the Amber Alert. TBIs, and it's Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, 15, male, white, brown eyes, brown hair, 5'5", five, five, 120 pounds, missing from Sumner County, Tennessee, since February 26. He's still missing, and they're still out there with a full-fledged search today. Yes, keep those hearts, green hearts and prayers coming for Seth, Sebastian, for the family. Don't forget his grandmother. You know. Um, but if you have any. Uh, anything. No matter how small. Hey Roxy. Tammy. No matter how small it is. Please call 1-800-TB-I-FIND. They did promise yesterday. They would look into everything. And. Um. It is heartbreaking. It is. Hey, Patriotism USA. Hello, welcome. And if you know anything, you can also call 615-451-3838, Sumner County. Just make sure that you call and report anything, and they will, no matter how small it is, look into it. Just make sure that you think it's important and that it's credible. But don't think anything's too silly. I was sad to hear tonight that flyers are being taken down and tore up all through Sumner County, Hendersonville, local. Shame on whoever's doing that. 
Keep the flowers going. Keep them passed out. That's a must. Online and off. And Seth, if you're listening, just know I had somebody let me know that even in UK, they said, I don't know if this makes a difference or not. I'm in UK, but I am still putting them up here. I said, you never, ever, ever know. Yeah, and you don't. You never know. And I thank that person for that very much. Hey, sweet misery. Hello. It is a shame. It's very sad. We're going to go over this um, podcast in just a minute. I just want to go over a few simple things. Um, is any anyone giving them just a little credit about being innocent after this? Well, it says all now being in about. Hold on. Maybe I got that mixed up. Anyone giving them just a little credit about being innocent after this? Well, it says it all now about being innocent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. They are putting poor Seth through hell. They sure are. They sure are. are. And there shouldn't be any doubt in anybody's mind. But you know, you know, you got to consider the source because you just got to consider the source, y'all. I know sometimes I get a little swayed sideways and want to go off the rails at some people sometimes. I got to remember I'm growing too, but you just got to consider the source. Some people are like that. They, they, why? I don't know. Uh, just consider the source, okay? They need to leave. They do need to leave Seth alone, but what it is, what it is. Um, Seth did a Nancy Grace interview today. He was there. Chris Wutton. <laughs> Chris Wutton cast the blame. This time, you know who he cast the blame on? TBI. Hi, Chris. I figure you're watching. I tagged you, and I'm sure you'll come back and watch. I'm sure you will. I bet you're... Y'all know what I'm going to do? I just want to fully warn y'all. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tell you ahead of time. That interview that I was summoned to off the top of my head when I was on another panel. I'm going to replay that. I'm, I'm going to do it live though, since I'm also learning to uh, screen share. I'm, I'm just going to put it up there and I'm going to let it rip and I'm going to go on and do my housework or go to bed early or whatever I want to do. I don't know. And I, since I don't sleep good, I'm just going to check back. So if you're in a live and that's just running and I don't speak. Yeah, I think I'll just run it again. And let you give your thoughts from that to what you know now. Mods can check in periodically or whatever y'all want to do. Nobody sleeps around the streets anymore, right? Yep, we're going to do that. Okay. Okay. Anyway. Um. So Seth did his Nancy Grace interview today and he was there. He's doing everything he can. This is stream, baby stream. I will. Um, said he's going to do that. And um, also, um, I learned that Chris was not there and he ditched Nancy Grace. That's a bad idea to ditch Miss Nancy Grace. I mean, she's the mother load of all, everybody. Are you kidding me? That's a bad idea. Hey, Trev. Um, ditch Miss Nancy Grace. Not only that, Chris Proudfoot, the stepfather of Sebastian. I like to say Katie's husband. Katie's husband. Shame on him. Yes. And he blamed it on TBI. 
of all things. He blamed it on TBI. Yeah, they're supposed to be Sebastian's greatest advocate. I'm making you work overtime. <laughs> Y'all might have to switch up. <laughs> well, since I'm just getting used to it, you know, you have to like, <laughs> uh, I'll make it worth your while. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sin, <laughs> you're young. <laughs> hey, Nana. <laughs> Yeah, and no test. And he decided he was not going to take no polygraph test either. Now, Nancy jumped through hoops for him. She set it up two or three times for him. She set it up one time near his work. You know, the work he lied to her about when he was on my interview. He told me he was working over... Vanderbilt, that was the other story. He was working over Vanderbilt in a crane, taking a temporary job, watching all the helicopters come in. And listen, listen, people. I, I, they want to mock Sebastian. I can't help but like be sarcastic with them. I really can't. You know what? And that's why I tell y'all to read between the lines. It's not looking good for them. I don't care what Ellie says. You know, I'm trying to respect them, but y'all have to read between the lines with them, honey, because <laughs> it don't take Ray Charles to see. Anybody can see who is the number one suspect. And another thing. They just holding this close to their vest some things. Think about this too. Remember what I was telling y'all earlier about they said the parents cooperating in the beginning? Well, there's something else I need to throw out there to y'all and you can chew on this. How about... Katie and Seth got called in. Now, I still think, yikes, I'm going to try to be a little bit nicer. I, I, I still think some kind of type of way about Katie. But, however, I was thinking a while ago, um, earlier, that Katie and Seth is the only parents, right? Ooh, and Chris wasn't invited to that meeting. Maybe he was, but yikes. Sebastian only has two parents. Katie and Seth, mom and dad. They are cooperating. Ding, 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 ding. What if, what if, Oh, Christopher Proudfeet is the number one suspect. I'm just saying the prime, prime, prime. The well done with the fork in it. Maybe he ain't as rare as he likes his steak. I'm just saying. <clears throat> just saying. Yeah, they're like a bow constrictor with him. <laughs> it is possible. I don't know. Y'all just have to read between the lines and come up with your own conclusions. It's a free world. Everybody can have their opinions. You just got to use your, your brain a little bit. Um, I think he didn't take the poly because he knows he would fail. Nancy wanted to know... Um, something. Here's a little tidbit for Miss Nancy. If she watches again, shout out to Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. Um, she watches evidently, but, um, uh, do you know that he got mad 
at Katie when she did take her lie detective test, he got so mad. He got mad. He got fired up. Oh, you don't need me to get a call any minute. I don't got an email from them people, honey. I could show you. But we won't go there. It's okay. I don't have to flaunt nothing. I think the whole world can know that they watched me. I just can't believe Chris lied to Nancy. I can't believe that. So do I think she's afraid of Chris? It's possible. Mm, I don't know. Is she battered? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I, I don't I don't want to I, I don't know. There's probably some I mean there's control going on there, yeah. Yeah, that's what narcissists do. Absolutely. Yeah, she could I mean there's I'm I'm so I'm like this on that. She don't seem battered right now that she don't have a kid. JLR put out a, a photo. She was talking to her neighbor right there with him. Looked happy, just fine. All right there with the proud feet and the bower socks and or bower bow. <laughs> Whatever their names are. Who cares? They sure wasn't worried about what Sebastian was eating on Easter, right? Just saying. I just couldn't believe, though, that they wanted to blame it on TBI. Or Chris wanted to blame it on TBI. Yeah, and even if they're even if they're not, they're both guilty of neglect and abuse. They both lied. They both sit right there and lied. And what I want to know is how long has this abuse been going on? And CPS sure dropped the ball, not getting in contact with Seth. But then again, you got to wonder, you got to wonder, what did Chris and Katie tell them about Seth that they did not contact Seth? Just curious. That shouldn't have mattered either because it's their job to know more about you when they go into a household to see about a child than you know about yourself. Just saying, that's a fact. When Chris was on Nancy's, he volunteered to take a poly and Ellie, he said, told him not to. But he challenged Nancy on that polygraph. He said he would you, he said, you name the place, you name the time and the place, and I will be there. Well, guess what? Seth told her the same thing tonight. He said he would take it, and I believe she can believe him. He'll be there. He's been out with blisters on his feet. He's been out with a hurt shoulder. And he's been out every day. He's hired four private eyes from what I can understand. And he has searched and searched and searched for his son. And he has cried many tears. And he has used these platforms that he has had, had when he's had the little bit of time that he's had to ask for his son to beg for his son, to tell his son if his son could hear him, to run, 
to call him if he can get to a phone, to call 911, to do everything that he can to get away. To, he's done everything he can, all the right things. And every time they've been on a panel and had the opportunity, whether it be social media, local media, any news station, they've lied, added to, took away. You don't do that. The truth is the truth is the truth. Exactly. Now they're stuck for life. And refused to go on some of the biggest places there are, whether it be local media, you know, podcast, news, stuff, whatever you want to call it. I don't care. I even heard a little birdie the other day say, <laughs> and I don't have to call no names say that the parents, and I know it's not Seth, have now engaged them and they'll be coming on board to wreck any YouTuber as they did in Summer Wells and they are the scum of the earth. The scum of the earth and good God help everybody that ever has this boy in his mouth, good, bad, or indifferent. And I hope they lock every damn one of y'all up. Everyone. Why? See, those are the ones that will go tear up these flyers. Those are the ones that need to be in jail. Right there. Why? Sad. It's sad. I don't know why this is going on. I have no idea. I don't want to go on and ramble. What I want to do is I want to come on here and I want to let y'all listen to this. And we'll go over it. If you will, mods, if you'll put my fair use up. I'm not going to. It's nothing to show. But we'll just kind of go over what they're talking about. Let you listen to it. And we'll just kind of go over it. Nancy Grace. Literally, in the last hour, a new search has been launched for missing autistic boy Sebastian Rogers. Why? Why is there a new search re-canvassing areas that have already been searched? Could it have anything to do with the fact that Sebastian's glasses may have been Ooh, found? It's the full one. And Right now, controversy swirling about a polygraph. I'm Nancy Grace. This is Crime Stories. Thank you for being with us here at Crime Stories. I think they do come from. I think they do. Joining me and I'll start panel to make sense of what we know right now, but I do know this. I don't need an expert to tell me that there has been an alert that went out to media. A new search is taking place right now as we speak. That was this morning. Sebastian Rogers, the missing autistic boy. What does that mean? Is there new information that has not been released to us as a location, been identified that is more important than other locations? This is unusual for a research of an area that may have already been searched. What precipitated the new search? This, as we learn, glasses, eyeglasses have been found. Are they Sebastian's? First of all, on the new search, joining me, Lauren Conlon, investigative reporter and host of The Outlier. Lauren, thank you for being with us. I understand that a new search has just been launched. Who, what, where, when, why? Tell me. Yes. So as you said, Nancy, it's in Hendersonville, and it's the same areas, and it's sheriffs in Sumner County and counties 
all over and it's EMS workers and it's more volunteers and the, I believe it is the uh, uh, Sumner County EMS is saying six to 10 miles and, uh, and so on. So this happened this morning. This is breaking news. They are saying this is, has nothing to do with the press conference yesterday with the glasses found, but that is all we know. Guys, when you hear Lauren Collin, who's been on the case from the very beginning of missing autistic boy Sebastian Rob Rogers, when you hear her say volunteers, there's a caveat to that. They are law enforcement, EMTs, people in the criminal law business, all banding together for a new search. This, as we learn, that glasses have been found, glasses found. That could be very significant. And joining me is someone who is acutely aware of all the facts surrounding that pair of glasses. Seth Rogers is with us. Uh, Seth is Sebastian's biological father. And you may have gone online and seen Seth. At first, you see nothing but densely <laughs> forested woodland. And then you realize I love Seth her. Rogers out there on foot looking for his son. He hasn't quit. He took a brief respite over Easter break, and now he's back at it. Seth Rogers, thank you for being with us. You can find him at Sebastian Strong. Seth, tell me about the discovery of the glasses. My volunteers found them in Gallatin at around 210 Hutt Street on Monday. Seth, uh, no offense, but you're speaking Greek to me. Okay, where is that? Where is that in relation to Sebastian's home where he was living with his mother? His... Now, listen, I want to tell y'all something. Ellie's done come out and this was after, you know, they started filming and Ellie has come out and said the glasses are not Sebastian's later on in here. You're going to hear them break in and say they are not Sebastian's glasses. Um, just so you know, so everybody don't get in a panic. Um, however, I did want to tell you, Seth didn't know, and you'll hear him say this in here, Seth did not know, but the glasses that were found, it's just odd to me that it was about a minute, a street over from the Bower Sox grandmother the step-grandmother. That was just odd. But Ellie says they're not his glasses. So I'm just saying Seth will be on Court TV at 845. Thank you, Don, for that. Thank you. <clears throat> Proudfoot. It's about 14 miles from uh, his mom's residence. It's not in Hendersonville. Had he recently gotten Sad. new glasses, or am I seeing Seth Rogers his actual glasses? They were close enough I feel that I asked Sumner County to to bag and tag them. I mean, when I saw them through the pictures Ooh. from my volunteers, and they stated they couldn't get a hold of anybody, you know, I now. flagged down a deputy sheriff, and I told them to put on some gloves, put them in a bag, and bring them in. And that's what they did. They took pictures around the area to show where they were laying and how they were laying on the street. So they would have some type of regulation on where they were placed or left or left at or however they needed. And they brought them into our volunteer where our volunteers gather every morning Possibly. and chain of evidence was completed. And they took him in. Guys, joining us is Sebastian's biological father, Seth Rogers. Seth, I want to circle back to what you said. These glasses were found about 14 miles from where Sebastian resided with his mother and stepfather. A volunteer found them. Were you on the search when the volunteer found them? I was not with the group. Not with that group. Where then were, 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 Correct. were the glasses out in a forested area? Were they, I heard you mention a street, were they thrown by the side of the street? They were on the side of the road. So, okay, 
You just clarify something for me. It's in a residential area, like a cul-de-sac. Uh, I don't believe it was a cul-de-sac, but I believe it's a uh, hutch court. So I believe it was leading into a cul-de-sac. If you were in a car, how long would it take you to get from where Sebastian lived with his mom to where the glasses were found? Depending on traffic, probably about 14, 15 months. Minutes. Uh, of course, we're talking about an area that has hills, some mountains. So it's not always as simple as it, it's. And again, Ellie said they're not his, but that's a good point. Because it's not every day you find prescription glasses just laying around on the ground, right? But what do I know? Smiley don't know nothing. It's to go 14 miles it could take 14 minutes it could take an hour if you have to go over a hill to get there no but he don't know short, where they live he don't know any, he didn't know anything about, about that i'm telling you home. that do you believe sebastian has ever walked through this area i have no idea I don't even know what's in the area. I wonder if he had any friends he's not here. From, but you believe he's from the other side of town. Similar enough totally to opposite. the glasses we're seeing that you asked for them to be bagged. Were they cracked? Were they broken in any way? No, ma'am. They had some scratch marks on the inside of the nose piece. And that was it. The lenses weren't scratched. There was no scuff marks on the outside of them. Guys, you are hearing Seth Rogers, this is Sebastian's bio dad, speaking about a discovery this weekend, a discovery regarding Sebastian's glasses. Now, the reality is, it is a simple matter to determine if these are really his. Seth is telling us they look enough like them that they could very well be his and they've been taken into evidence. To make sure, what we do is take the lens out and compare it to his last diagnosis and his last lens prescription to find out, are these really Sebastian's glasses? And if so, why were they there? Also, hey, we're going to be looking for prints. We're going to be looking for any DNA at all on these glasses. What, if anything, can they tell us? Back to Lauren Conlon, guys. Right now, as we are speaking, a new search is underway for Sebastian. Lauren Conlon joining us from the outlier. Lauren, any idea what caused, what sparked a new search? I mean, I think people at this point, and obviously Seth Rogers included, are so worried and so concerned, especially after hearing about the glasses. So I personally think this also has to do with the Cajun Navy last week saying, okay, we're gonna step back, we're going to regroup, we're not going to stop. Uh, and so in turn, I think more people, more organizations stepped up to help. So bottom line, we don't know. Maybe the glasses, maybe the fact that Cajun Navy is stepping back, but we know the search is happening right now and we know where the search is. It's an area that has already been searched, which I find very, very intriguing. Why are they researching a particular area? Nancy, if I can jump in for just a second, there has just been a post from the Sumner County Sheriff's Office. They want to clarify that those eyeglasses that were found are not again, are not related to Sebastian Rogers. Guys, in addition to Lauren Collin and Seth Rogers joining us is Dave Mack, CrimeOnline.com. In okay. And also, and Nancy is so good at her job, but she just totally went around that. I was just, and, and oh, I, that's no shade or anything. That's just, she totally went around that and went on with what she was doing. But that was kind of a breaking news thing. Did you see how Seth, I mean, can you imagine him sitting there and he, he just found that out like the rest of everybody else. I'm, I'm thinking he did. They possibly could have told him ahead of time. I don't know. But I think everybody got it the same unless he got a text or something. He probably didn't have time to digest that. I don't know. I think everything was happening in real time. I don't know how he was feeling about that either way. Because his hope was maybe he just got a clue. And he said on a podcast last night that he, he was 90% sure. I heard that with my own ears. And then I heard it replayed again this morning. 
he was 90%. So yeah, it had to be hard on him either way. I just, I couldn't imagine, man. I just could not imagine that man is ready for, if he hadn't already had a breakdown, he, he's probably already had two or three. Yeah, hopes up and then down, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's just sad. I love how Nancy does all of this, though. I think it's so good. And, and you're right. If anybody has any doubts after this, something's wrong. Something's wrong. All right, here we go. Investigative reporter who has also been on the disappearance of Sebastian Rogers from the very, very beginning. I love Dave Mack, um, let me just say at the outset, recently, the stepfather, Mr. Proudfoot, stated that he would take a polygraph if we set it up. As a matter of fact, uh, take a listen to this. Have the two of you taken a polygraph? I have. I have not. Would you be willing to? I've offered and volunteered on many occasions to take a polygraph, but I was told directly by law enforcement because of my whereabouts, I did not need one. I understand. Ms. Proudfoot, did you pass your polygraph? I did. Okay, now now listen to this. He says, I've offered and volunteered on many occasions to take a polygraph. I was told directly by law enforcement but because of my whereabouts, I did not need one. Listen to more. And Mr. Proudfoot, you have volunteered to take a poly? Yes, ma'am. If I were to set up a poly for you, would you take it? Name the place and time, ma'am. I'll be there. Well, we did. We did that. We set up a polygrapher, a very well-respected polygrapher, a place and a time. Mr. Proudfoot tells us that he has been instructed by the TBI not to be on with us today and ask for help finding his son, his stepson, and not to take a polygraph. I, I've never heard of that. I always loved it when witnesses, targets, or defendants Anybody would take a polygraph. If I want my own polygraph, I would. Listen to me. Listen to me. Right now. TBI is TBI. LE is LE. Chris Proudfoot. Lawyers are lawyers. TBI and LE, otherwise known as AKA, cops, police, whatever. They are not attorneys. Okay? And they don't always know the law. That's why they do what they do and attorneys do what they do. And they will never tell you not to take a polygraph test. They cannot do that. Now, they can read you your rights. They can tell you what you say can and will be held against you. Do you even know your rights? Because I'm not going to read you your rights. I'm not going to do that. Because you know why? I read Don Wells. He is. I'm sure he knew he is. He's a career criminal. I'm not going to sit here and give you yours. I hope your ass gets caught. A lawyer's not going to tell you to do that. Listen to Nancy Grace. She was a prosecutor. You didn't want to go on there. And you did not want to do a polygraph. Because you know why? You knew Nancy Grace would do what L.E. or some of your maybe friends, I don't know, or acquaintances, I'm not suggesting a thing, would do differently. 
And that would be Nancy Grace would ask the right questions that you, sir, would fail. It wouldn't be any pussyfooting around and leave you hanging questions. Nancy would ask the exact question, not in a roundabout way. That's why you didn't go. You say you vet everybody. You vetted that. I bet. Oh, get one as an assistant district attorney. So I find yeah. that very curious that he would be. Excuse me. Or your little coach told you not to go. <laughs> from asking for the help from the public as we see a volunteer search launching right now with law enforcement and not to take a polygraph. Now, very curious. Excuse me, is this the checkout line? Oh no, this is the line for Florida Sweet Corn. Florida Sweet Corn is in season? Nobody told me. You're not a member of the Fresh from he hadn't took a lie detective test, Brenda. The only person that's took a lie detective test is Katie. Florida Club, are you? Chris, I'm Florida. sorry. Fresh I sent you a message, Club. hon. Sign up at freshfromflorida.com. I sent you some numbers, too. Locally grown produce is in and season. I'm sorry the about your aunt. lots of free perks, but knowing when Florida sweet corn is available is one of my favorites. Yes, I'll be heading over to freshfromflorida.com after I get my Florida sweet corn. Fresh from Florida. There's sunshine in every bite. Hey, this is Christina Quinn. I'm the host of Try This, the Washington Post's new series of audio courses. The idea behind Try This is to become better functioning humans without having to comb the internet for countless hours. In our first course, we learn how to sleep better. Now, we're going to learn how to make our friendships stronger. I'll offer expert tips that are... Yeah, his mom might have told him not to go. Glasses in session. Find Try This from the Washington Post wherever you listen. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra I, got these. In our I don't know where it stopped at because like it's on a commercial right now. Dishes, yeah, we're sorry, um, Chris H. Uh, I'm sorry about your cousin. I sent you some information. All your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now. Yeah, Katie took one according to her, but no one actually confirmed that she passed it. That's right. Crime Stories with Nancy Grace. Dave Mack, didn't Mr. Proudfoot, Chris Proudfoot, Sebastian Rogers' stepfather, didn't he tell us he would take the polygraph anywhere, anytime? Isn't that true? He said it. Anywhere you name the place, I'll be there. He also told us, should I believe him or my lion ears? That he has never taken a polygraph before. Didn't he tell us that? That's what he said. He told you that. Okay. Dave Mack, um, CrimeOnline.com investigative reporter. Did he not tell another outlet he had already taken a polygraph and passed it? Yep, he sure did. He, exact words. He said somebody asked. Explain, please. He did interviews. He did a number of interviews, Nancy, when... Uh, just and have no in word. This one particular, asked about have you taken a polygraph? He said somebody asked the question. This is a direct quote. Was a polygraph taken and has it been passed? Yes. I didn't specify who or when, but what I can tell you, everything has been vetted completely. Polygraphs have come back as passed. So I'm confused as in why they're all wondering if myself, my wife, and the biological father took one. Exact words. That's what he said. Okay, but Seth Rogers, this is Sebastian's dad, his bio dad. Sebastian, uh, Seth, I don't understand that because he told me he would take a polygraph if I set it up. I set it up. I went through a lot of hoops to get it set up. One convenient to him in the area where he says he's working. Then he wouldn't take it and blames the TBI. So now I find out 
He sold other outlets. He's taken one and passed. Do you know the truth? I don't. I really don't know. But I'll tell you what. I volunteered to take the polygraph. I was told that I wasn't. I didn't need to because they have my location and whereabouts. But I still volunteered. And if somebody wants me to. Now, remember, he works in the jail. And he had about, I heard him the one night, he, I forgot how many cameras, but he had a lot of cameras on him in the jail. And I think he has about, on top of that, 65 inmates that night that, you know, also was witnesses. Um, so, okay, Chris. Yeah, that's okay. So, um, he had about um, 65 inmates on top of all the cameras and stuff. So, um, he's good. You can't get no tighter than that. Just FYI. Me to take one. That's something on my own free will. I haven't been told by TBI that I can't take one. I, I, I got a lot of things I need to dissect very quickly. Dave Mack, you and I have been scouring the internet um, and, and speaking to various witnesses. Mr. Proudfoot tells me to my face that he hit Sebastian with the belt. This is an autistic boy. An autistic boy, do they, at, at his level of severity of autism, and I, I've got an expert, uh, Courtney Lasky, is going to explain this to me. I did not teach this in law school. How would that affect a child with autism? But, but that said, I want to focus on what I'm hearing, Dave, Matt. Help me, Dave. Uh, I'm hearing that it happened years ago. In both of those quotes where you heard Chris Proudfoot speaking, he said several years ago. Then he says, when I press him on that, he says at least three years ago. However, he stated a different scenario to a different person. Explain, Dave Mack. He did a uh, YouTube interview, and in that interview, he described the actual belt whack. And... You know, in your interview, he said that the belt whack did not lead to a CPS call. So I asked you about the age of Sebastian when Sebastian was hit with the belt. One thing at a time, brother. The age of Sebastian. He said it was three years ago. He said in another interview that the 15-year-old boy was upset. He was in trouble. He said he's 15 and in trouble. He was describing why. Uh, Sebastian was mad about the punishment, the whack. And he said, 15-year-old boy, punishment. Now, that's not three years ago. That's within the last 12 months. That is within the same year that Sebastian goes missing. That is a significant point. And in your interview, Katie agreed with him. She was saying, yeah, at least three years. Yes, she did. You're right. You're absolutely right. Simbers. What, what, what? What's that? His birth, December 7th. He just turned 15. Okay. The significance of that is that he had not been 15 that long, according to this, when he got whacked with a belt. So, does it matter when he got whacked with a belt? To me, it matters if you're telling two different stories. That's what matters. I, I've never been hit or hit anyone with a belt. And I remember the last time either one of my children were spanked. It was Lucy because she clobbered John David in the head with a piece of wood. She turned around and looked at me and went, is that it, basically? Because I was spanking her through a huge diapy. Okay, it didn't work, so that was the last smack. Um, long story short... There's a whole scenario that I need to talk with uh, Ms. Lasky about uh, hitting a child that is autistic with a belt or any child with a belt for Pete's sake. But that said, what's concerning me now is two different stories. And as Dave Mack first said, we've got a CPS issue. Because if you will recall Dave Mack and that last sound oh, I played yeah. of oh, Mr. Proudfoot speaking to yeah, me, he's disabled. I said, how did that turn into a CPS child protective services complaint? And he says... That did not turn into a CPS complaint. But wait a minute. He's told a different story to a different person. Tell me, Dave Mack, and make sure you're right. Describing the bell whack 
the specific belt whack, hit him one time with the belt, and Chris Proudfoot said, Seth, uh, that Sebastian went to school, told a teacher what had happened, and he actually says the school, they're an automatic reporter, and they reported it to CPS. He went further to say, that night, when they were sitting down to dinner, a CPS worker came to their house that evening, to their house. And by the way, he added, they knew the CPS worker because she had been to the house before. He went on to explain heroically how he didn't get in trouble, but that this caseworker allegedly took Sebastian outside and told him, you can't tell lies about people. You'll get in trouble yourself. So the story from Chris Proudfoot in this other version is that he spanked Sebastian. Sebastian went to school and told a teacher. Teacher reported it to CPS. CPS came out of their house that night while they're eating dinner and didn't even want to hear Chris Proudfoot's side of the story. He said, I already know what happened and took Sebastian outside and talked to him. The boy needed help and there was nobody helping apparently. Okay, Liz, if you don't mind, could you play 23 for me? I'm glad I got it out of him, too, um, Millie. And I am I really am thankful um, because actually Crime Crazy Critters put them side by side, mine and, and Nancy's, excuse me. And I thanked her for it, and I shared it out that day because y'all know I'm not technical in that. And um, she um, put them side by side. And when you literally see them side by side, you're sitting there with your jaw dropped going, did this really just happen? Did, did this really happen? And he is such a liar, such a liar. And it's just unimaginable. And I saw it. Nancy saw it. And the world saw it. And the ones that didn't want to see it, I can't help them. <laughs> I can't help them. Uh, actually, um, others saw it too. And they they got it. They got it. They got the whole interview and wanted the clippings of that. And they got that too. So that's the fact of the matter, and I don't know what to tell y'all, you know. And somebody was asking, um, now I only know, I don't know what it is in Tennessee. I, I don't go looking up every law in every state and every whatever, um, uh, unless I'm specifically on something that I have to. I do have a life, but um, you can... Uh, if you don't have malice, is whip here in Florida, and I don't think it's right. I don't, I don't think I personally. That's just my personal opinion. Whip with your hand, a belt. I think they should, corporal punishment basically, and I don't think you should. Some of y'all may disagree. That's just me. I handle stuff different. Y'all handle stuff different. However. I don't care where you're at. If you do that to a child that's got a disability with a belt, the law is, yes, whoever just asked that, you can and will go to jail. So, I don't know what the deal was. There, I was not there, but he told it to me willingly. And I, the most part that I hated besides that happening to Sebastian, knowing what we know now, is knowing what we know now from Nina is how long did it happen for um, and how many times and how long did Katie let it go on? How many times does she know about it? Was she in on it? 
And then the next worst part ever for me that broke me down is to hear that Seth, it was the first time that he, he ever heard about it was on my YouTube. And I feel like, I feel like, because that broke that man, but I feel like Chris felt like, now in hindsight, I feel like Chris knew what he was doing in my interview, and he was rubbing that in Seth's face. That's what I feel like, in my opinion, now looking back. Because I didn't know. I wasn't, I had no questions. I was not prepared. I didn't have a clue. Chris come to me, wanted the interview right then and there. I, I had no clue. And I was doing the questions off the top of my head. And regardless of what y'all think, evidently they came in handy and will. And I, I still feel like they will come in handy. And I did it for Sebastian. And I was trying to think. Otherwise, Seth would have never known this. I feel like in the end, regardless, there was abuse going on there. Something else I heard I wanted to play. I'm not finished with this yet. You have to go back. I didn't really listen to it until somebody sent it to me today. And that was the dispatch call. And something also that needs to be said is this. They say, they all say he was not a runner. I think y'all all need to go back and listen to that call. I don't even know where it's at right now, my million things, but go back and listen to that call, which by the way was made not to 911, but to a regular dispatch number from Memphis. Yes, the stepfather said, I called. No, it was a three way call. By the way, you lied to Nancy again. It was a three way call. To the dispatch, you must have had them on speed dial. I don't know what you did, but whatever. During that call I was listening to, if y'all listen real close, I had to listen twice. Everybody, even Seth said he's not a runner, but Seth may not have known. It says in that call, that the neighbor at the third house down told Ellie that morning they had to get him one time. And I don't know what the one time was, if it was three days ago, one day ago, that day, that night. I have no clue. Two months ago, a year ago, I don't know. They hadn't been in that house that long. I know that. From under his car. He was hiding under the man's car. <coughs> so, if that's true, which it was on the dispatch call, so we know it had to be true, but if the man was telling the law the truth, somebody's lying. Either man, the man telling the law that, or Katie and them is lying about him being a runner. And I don't put Seth in there. I just say Seth just didn't know. Like he just didn't know. Because he's way over here on the other way side of town. I mean, who? What in the hell's going on? Listen to the dispatch call. I'll put it out if I can get it on myself. Because the one I have has the has where you can read it. So that's why they told them, if you'll remember when the cops was looking 
and everybody was looking. They said he likes to hide under or in small things. That's why. Now I know why they said that on the news and stuff. And that's why they were looking in all, everything. Because the neighbor said that and it's on the dispatch call. Go back and listen to it. Someone is lying. So was he a runner or was he not a runner? Or did he just happen? Was that a one-time isolated incident? Did that happen just recently? Just recently before this happened? It got me to thinking. And or and and or did somebody run him out of the house? That time he hid under the car. This is what we're talking about now for a minute. Or did he walk and just go under the car and hide? I mean, I just, I don't know. So Green Eyes said, who called Chris? Okay, so let me see if I'm saying this right. Who, shoot. Who called Chris? Call Katie. Or Katie called Chris the one day only fact stat says who did it? Who did the caller along? Even he came home thud. Heard a speakerphone. Yeah, uh, oh, whoever oh uh, yeah, who was they on speakerphone? I don't know if they were on speakerphone, but even if they weren't and they were talking for three hours, so she said she heard the thud. What was it around 10 if my memory serves me right? See, they told a whole different story right there to me and Nancy. You know, she just told me, she she yelled in there, I don't know what you're doing. Just go to bed, you know, whatever. Or go to sleep. She told Nancy she heard a thud and had a whole conversation with him. Okay, mama, I love you. Or, you know, bubba, I love you. Uh, you know, what? Uh, I can't even understand this lady. There's a lot of red flags. So she's lying too. She's definitely lying. But I would like to know, since CPS is involved, and they're involved now, you know, because same thing with Summer. Now we have a missing child. So it makes me think Logical thinking, Chris told me something in January that happened in January. So was the case ever closed on Sebastian? Probably not. Probably not. Why not? Even if you get a CPS case on you, it's usually closed within 45 days. My God. Wasn't nothing wrong with their house. Look at the inside of their house. They got money. See, money can't buy everything. That's what I keep telling y'all. So what was wrong? What was wrong? Something was wrong in that household. Something's wrong in the household. Y'all better listen to me. What does Angela say? The queen Stay woke. Y'all better stay woke. One more time. Listen to Sebastian's st uh, stepfather, Mr. Proudfoot. Was that the first time you had ever hit him with a belt? Yes, ma'am. The one and only time, actually. When was this? Uh, years ago, ma'am. Any idea how many? Sad. Three, ten, one? Uh, <laughs> it, it, probably at least three years ago. I don't understand how that turned into a CPS or Child Protective Services complaint. How were they that, alerted that, that you hit him with a bat? That did not turn, that did not turn into a CPS request. Uh, Service call. As we go to air right now, we are learning a new search is being conducted by 
LA law enforcement volunteers apparently re canvassing an area that has already been searched. Why? Why the focus on that one area? Joining me in the last moments, Brian Trasher joining us, VP of the United Cajun Navy. Brian, you and I have been talking a lot. A lot is happening. One, you called off the search one day just before the search started. And two, there's a lot of hate going on against the Cajun Navy. I don't get it. You're out there on your own time, volunteering, trying to help find Sebastian or a clue of Sebastian. Somebody is full of a lot of hate for volunteers, which proves no good deed goes unpunished. And I'm hearing, by the way, the same thing, something similar from Seth Rogers, who is Sebastian's bio dad. The searches are being torpedoed. I, I don't understand it. Number one, Brian Trasher, why has the Cajun no, Navy pulled out of a search? Well, just to be clear, we, we gave up uh, or called off leading the public searches. So we're no longer putting out a public call for volunteers and leading searches with volunteers. Um, we did have uh, some volunteers that were threatened despite what uh, – so the local PD said in their press conference, uh, we, we did have some credible threats. We have recordings of telephone threats. We have uh, uh, surveillance video of in-person threats. Uh, I know there, it was said that there was no police report filed. There was a police report filed about a threat with Metro Nashville PD. Uh, it's not clear as to whether those departments share information with each other. Uh, but we did provide a copy of that report with your producers just to, to show that we are telling the truth. Um, why, why the hate? I, I think that there, you know, there are some people out there who make money off of tragedies. And when volunteer groups come in and, and try to take over and help, I think it takes away from their potential revenue. And, and when you mess with people's money, they get mad. Uh, I think that's just part of it. That had a conversation with Seth Rogers on Easter Sunday. Um, he has his own theories about why uh, himself and other volunteer groups are being impeded yeah. in the search for Sebastian, about why they're receiving so much online hate. I'll let Seth Thank speak to so for much. himself and his own experience. Yes, we'll do that. I want to talk to you about you and the Cajun Navy. I heard some of the threats myself, recorded threats. Um, but could you succinctly in a nutshell, explain what type of threats have been leveled against members of the Cajun Navy who are out trying to find Sebastian. Basically, just a lot of, you know, we're going to run you out of town. We're going to dox you. We're going to, uh, you know, tell everybody where your family lives, things like that. But, you know, Nancy, what we found is that we, we've run background checks and all the people That's that have made these threats, they, they thought they could remain anonymous. And they're all career criminals. They all have rap sheets a mile long. So mm -hmm. criminal activity is nothing new to them. Uh, so it doesn't surprise us that they would have the gumption to go ahead and make threats like this. Uh, but I think what they were mistaken is when they thought there was oh, going to be no retaliation. Under my live they, tab. Uh, I'm going to play it again. Exposing these people and putting information oh, you mean Nancy Grace? Really freaked out. Um, so I'll you know, post my, my message it. Post to, uh, link. to those people making threats, you know, if you'll stop lying about the United Kingdom, you always got it posted. Click on that link you. right okay, there. You know what? I don't really care, Brian, who's lying on who. Those are just words. I care about uh, finding Sebastian, and I Correct. care about someone trying to torpedo the search, be it with law enforcement, with the Cajun Navy with Seth Rogers, the biological father of Sebastian. Seth Rogers, you've told me that someone is also trying to sabotage your search for your own son. What's happening? Somebody doesn't want me to find my son. They have been, uh, there's things that have been coming in off the internet that I need to stop searching for him. I've had people following me around since, the, since, I would say day nine, day 10, people have been following me around. Once I started getting volunteers to help me, they started following around my volunteers, trying to be an intimidative factor. And now I found out that not only that, but they're going back to where we've already flyered and they're taking the flyers down. Okay, I, I don't know what to make of this. Brian Trasher is the vice president of the United Cajun Navy. OK, 
Okay. And there have been many incarnations of the Cajun Navy. But this is what I know. This group is out searching for Sebastian. They called off part of the search because they perceived threats. Now the bio dad, Seth, is telling me that flyers have been torn down for Sebastian. I, I, I don't understand that. What's happening, Brian? Yeah, I mean, as you heard us say in the past, and you now heard Sebastian's father, Seth, say that there are, without question, people in the local community, uh, whether the locals or not remains to be seen, but there are people there in Sumner County that do not want this boy found, and they want people uh, who are searching for him to stop, and they resorted to threats to try to make them stop. Uh, fortunately, it hasn't worked because uh, we still have people out there looking, and I know Seth is not going to stop looking uh, for his son. Guys, take a listen to what Dave Mack from Crime Online has to say. Welcome, the United welcome, welcome Navy Jackie. surprised many people that welcome, showed up for a you. recent search in Hendersonville for Sebastian Rogers. Just before people were preparing to gather, the United Cajun Navy came out with a post on Facebook and said they were calling off their search for Sebastian mm -hmm. Rogers over Y'all welcome, reasons. Jackie. Press for more details. The United Cajun Navy said they are concerned over the security for their staff and volunteers, as some are getting death threats online and in person. They said they were going to regroup in a few days and decide how best to move forward. Again, no good deed going unpunished. Why would people tear down flyers that have been placed up by Sebastian's father looking for him? And they told That's what I would like to know. Y'all tell me why anybody would tear down flyers. I mean, why would they want to distract from this case? Now, um, Bethany's fixing to tell you what she thinks, but but what do y'all think? Why? Why would anybody do that? Why are people so evil? Makes me wonder what condition Sebastian left in. If he left, yeah, yeah. I don't know what it was done to him. I know, I know. And I hate it. Yeah, it, that's what they did in Summer's case, too, Miss Chewy. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Probably know what really goes on in that town. And they're in a very prominent, very good well area. So if they're doing it there to him, because it's nothing like um, up way up in the country and, you know, all that. I mean, it is nice, a nice area and a subdivision and all that. I don't understand it is um but it's different the night and day than um hawkins county so i don't understand why somebody would be doing that um thank you lisa thank you and I'm glad you found my channel, too. I really am glad you found my channel. I appreciate each and every one of you. You have no idea how much. You don't know how much I appreciate you. The longer it takes with the warmer weather, it'll be harder to tell what happened. If he's been injured, yes. And the longer he's without his medicine, that's another thing because... I'm scared that I thought about what if he regresses and he has autism and the longer he's without his medicine, if he is okay, then um, he, what if he, I hope that they keep checking the hospitals over and over again, you know? So I don't know. It's not a good situation. Uh, my email is, uh, yeah, let's see, where's that? I think Millie just dropped it up there. 
Can you drop it again? I think it went by her. Oh, here it is. Let me post it. There it is, Jackie. There's my email address. Smiley story to you at yahoo.com. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah. Um, yeah, plus going through puberty, I'm sure he was more of a challenge. Yep. Yep. It's not easy. Yeah, I thought we was, Jackie. I thought we was. Me and Smelly are friends on Facebook. Yeah, how she got the news with Nick Barris. I tagged her. Yep. Yep. I thought we was. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yep. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate all of y'all. All right, let's see. Toll free numbers and descriptions of the boy. Why is this happening? And why is the Cajun Navy being threatened? I want to figure out, Brian Trasher, how you pick that particular area to search. There's a combination of some information. Uh, oh, okay, because I have that, family that, there. That yeah. Provided some areas that he showed us that had already been searched and areas that he felt uh, would be good to search. Other areas were just kind of known uh, location uh, of the young man at, at his home um, and trying to mm -hmm. figure out some places he would have been easy for him to walk to, places that Mine's he twenty eight bad. Um, we knew that there were some places that he liked to visit. Um, I couldn't either. But, uh, from, from what his mother said, he didn't have a history of wandering off without telling anybody. Oh. Um, so, you know, we, we wanted to make sure that we were we were searching every nook and cranny that we could uh, to find this boy. What can you tell me about that retention pond? Uh, there were reports a dog had hit yeah. on the retention pond. The pond was drained and nothing was found. Do I have that correct? I don't have any information um, with regards to that. I know there's been a lot of confusion about when dogs hit and where and things like that. Um, we go with the information that we have at the time. Um, my understanding is that that pond was drained and nothing was found there. Uh, but uh, Seth might be able to tell you a little bit more about uh, some of the areas that the dogs searched closer to the home and if there were confirmed hits or not. Crime Stories with Nancy Grace. Welcome back, everybody. Seth Roger joining us. This is Sebastian Rogers, biological father. You can find him at Sebastian Strong. Seth, again, thank you for being with us so much. I mean, when you're searching for a missing child, I like the focus to be on what is being done to find the child. What can we do to help find the child? But instead, there's all this controversy surrounding the search for Sebastian. And I find that very odd that people are not pulling together to try to find Sebastian. But that said, can you please said, shed some light on the search that occurred around the Proudfoot home. Did dogs hit on areas around the okay. home and leading to the retention pond? I was first told by one of the dog handlers that their dog did hit on a scent that took them over into the construction area to a retention pond. I was later told by law enforcement that it was a false hit I was also informed that they searched that pond where the dog went to and they did not find anything. And I was told that they were going to actually go back and drain the reten that retention pond and they had drained a separate retention pond. So you think they may have already drained two ponds? Yes, ma'am. The reason I'm asking, Seth, is because your ex, Ms. Proudfoot, stated that the dog hit and got Sebastian's scent around the home. Now I'm hearing it didn't. Was that hit at the retention pond, the false hit, or was it around their home? I'm being told by law enforcement that the dog hit to the retention pond was a false hit. Do you know of any hit by the dogs around the Proudfoot home at all? Not on the outside. Were there hits on the inside? 
I believe so. Okay, there should have been. Now, this is my conundrum, Seth. If there are no hits for Sebastian outside the Proudfoot home, that would suggest he did not leave the home. Earlier, I was asking the Proudfoots about their vehicles, what was their make, model, and year to determine if there was a navigation system in those vehicles that could tell me if the vehicles left the home that night. That's what I was getting at. Don't know Told the you. To that yet, but I believe that there were. You're telling me you were not told of any canine hit around the home. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. That's critical. Um, joining me, Dr. Sherry Schwartz, forensic psychologist who specializes in forensic psychology, capital mitigation, and victim advocacy at panthermitigation.com. Dr. Sherry, this search for Sebastian, if he is alive, he could still be saved. But it is degrading into a lot of infighting amongst searchers. I, I don't understand that. I don't understand it either. And I certainly am no expert in these kinds of searches, but it doesn't seem to me that I've ever heard of anything so vitriolic. In or he come out through the garage through a car. Teenager. Uh, one of the things that seems to be happening is there seems to be maybe a little bit of territory, um, you know, protecting their territory type thing, um, wanting maybe to be the organization. Dr. Sherry. Yes. They're out in the middle of the woods. Whose territory is that? Nobody. No, I, I, I agree with you 100%, Nancy. Uh, the thing is... Hold up. I just thought about that. If there's no scent outside the house anywhere... That would mean there's no hit by the trash can. Am I right or wrong? Am I right or wrong? So, that was not him that took the trash out. It couldn't have been him that took the trash out. Because they're not, I told y'all, they're not saying there's absolutely no foul play. They're saying everything's still on the table. How do I explain this? It it's just in the it's in the news. It's more I can't. They have said even today. It, it's it's there. It is. I don't know how to say it. Somebody help me out here. Somebody help me out here. Even today it was on there. I, I Let me see if I can find it. Hold on. I just didn't want to lose Nancy Grace where I was at. That's all. If I start pushing these buttons, I'm going to lose all this. Nope, can't do it because I'm going to lose all this. I will post. It's on my community post. It's clear as a bell. I clipped out that piece and I put it on my community post. There's no evidence of foul play, but you have to see it. Everything is still on the table, but including foul play. Annabella, your mod, can you go over to where I clipped it today? It's, it shouldn't be too far down on my community page. And it's a, you can post it right on here where it says about the foul play. It literally spells it out, foul play. Go, can you please go get that for me? I, I just don't know how to say it. I don't know how to word it on here. 
and I can't, I got my phone in airplane mode. If I take it off to go find it, all the phone calls and the messages and all the things are going to blow up. And I'm going to lose Nancy Grace, what I'm trying to do. They can't, there's not right now 100% of foul play, okay? They're not saying it's a foul play. They're not saying anything right now. And they're not saying it is, and they're not saying it's not. What did he say? What did he say? Oh, my God. Hold on a minute. Hold on. What did he say? What What did he say? And where is he at? What did he say? What's so devastating? Hold on a minute. Okay, not ruling out anything, including foul play. Because I know foul play is on there. What, what, so devastating. Um, What did he say, please? Whose channel? Yeah, nothing's been ruled out. Looks like he's on one of Justin's. Oh, he's supposed to be on that TikTok, uh, Justin TikTok. I forgot about that. What did he say, though? See, I can't. What did he say? Need some Z's. What did he say? Well, I don't know. We'll have to post that later. So I think he's supposed to be on um Yeah, we're all here if someone oh there he is. He told about CPS inside in California. Chris and Katie led a thirteen year old around Sebastian at and at seven and that child molested him oh my god oh my god are you are you for real okay thank you He must have got the records. Huh.
<sighs> okay. You know, Got we just know about 10 now more minutes. that trolling is a thing. People troll. I don't understand why this situation would attract trolls and for people to make threats when everybody just wants to find this little boy, preferably alive. It seems to me that people should be jumping in to help. So I don't have an explanation for that other than that when they can remain anonymous, relatively anonymous, the trolling seems to increase. But as Brian pointed out earlier, when these people are exposed, all of a sudden they back off because they don't want to be known as trolls. Another question to you, Seth Rogers. This is Sebastian's biological father who has been out on foot searching for his son. Seth, did you say you have or have not, would, would not take a polygraph? I would. Wonderful. If I set one up for you, will you take the polygraph? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can y'all drop you know, his GoFundMe page, please? Pull this against you. And his TikTok you then don't or his take uh, the polygraph. Right? What you is it? Cash that? app? Yes, ma'am. Because I want to know where everybody really was that night. For instance, if Mr. Proudfoot was where he says he is, or says he was at work near Memphis. I believe he would have been Thank in his RV. Is that your understanding, Seth? That would be my understanding. So, if you're in an RV park, and I've been in a lot of them with the twins and my husband, they are covered in security cams. Where's the security footage? Did he leave? Did he go home? I don't know. Has his RV been seized? Has it been processed? This does not mean at all that he had anything to do with Sebastian's disappearance. This is part of a thorough investigation. That's all I'm saying. Question, did Sebastian know how to swim? Yes, ma'am. My son was like a fish. Interesting, like a fish. Where he could walk. Okay, good, good to know. We've had a lot of questions about that. I have a question for Seth. Please jump in and remember guys, I, we're not having high tea at Windsor Castle. I don't know how many times i got to tell you this. We're not with Charles and Camilla. So jump in. You're hearing Lauren Conley. Go ahead, Lauren. Yes, Seth. So we've heard law enforcement state many times that all the parents are cooperating. To me, this is not the same thing as being ruled out as a suspect. Has law enforcement directly said to you, we are ruling you out as a suspect or we are looking at someone else as a suspect. I'm just curious the difference there. No, they've told me that we're all suspects. We're all suspects until Sebastian is found. Mm -hmm. This is an open investigation. So the only way that the investigation will close is we find Sebastian. And that's my purpose. Right. and. And in terms of the last time I was on this panel, and we did ask Chris Proudfoot about the United Cajun Navy, his words exactly were when they were at a restaurant and Katie was on the phone, he said, quote, my wife was on the phone with the Cajun Navy and that's how they were brought in. Did you happen to hear him say that? I've heard that he said that. Okay, and that is not true at all. This is all you. I've seen your mother post about this. I've seen the Cajun Navy post about you. I just heard Brian. So that is false. From my understanding, they're the ones that uh, I reached out to them. They were trying to get a hold of me. I had somebody get a phone number so I could turn around and speak to Mr. Terrell. Mm -hmm. And I called him up on his personal cell phone. That's Todd. Okay. Got it. And then the last thing was that everybody wants to know the picture with Sebastian without the glasses. You asked for that to be photoshopped so people could see what he looked like without glasses, just in case those are possibly his. That is correct. Yes, ma'am. Joining me right now, a special guest, Courtney Lasky, board certified behavior analyst, autism expert, chief clinical officer with Little Starts Therapy Service. Courtney, thank you for being with us. I understand, and of course, Seth, correct me if I'm wrong, that Sebastian 
suffered 6Q27 chromosomal deletion disorder. What is that and how would that affect him being lost right now? Yeah, so anytime we have a chromosomal deletion syndrome, we can think of it as an umbrella term. Our chromosomes act as codes in our behavior, the way we develop. Um, with his specific deletion of the 6Q27 chromosome, the symptoms related to that, even though it is rare, it does um, associate with intellectual disabilities, so we would see the symptomology of autism spectrum disorders, but sadly it also is associated with a higher risk of seizures and possible heart defects. Um, it's very, That's very right. that Sebastian might have those symptoms and be gone for and so long he the poly care. How would that affect him now if he is out there and if he's still alive and lost? Yes, um, anytime we have that intellectual disability, symptoms related to autism, we know that those social skills, our communication, which not only is our expressive language, it's also our receptive, what we're understanding, how we're processing the environment around us. He may be struggling with understanding what is happening, what he should do in different circumstances. I am so glad to hear Mr. Rogers saying that he swims like a fish um, because we do know that 91% of autistic children that is the highest risk of death for them is drowning. Um, it's it's scary. So we need that that processing. He has probably a delayed sense of danger and understanding um, what is dangerous in certain circumstances. Guys, I want you to stop for just one moment. You're hearing Courtney Lasky, who's an autism expert. What if, what if he's still alive? What if he's being held against yeah. his will? will? What if? He's being sex assaulted day after day after day. I have a strong hope that he is alive. I have a strong, strong hope that he is um, doing everything he can to process the situation around him. We know that any experience outside of his normal routine is going to be traumatic. Um, he will come away from this situation with definite phobias, um, more extreme um, rigid, rigidity in his routines, um, and just the inability possibly to communicate what has happened to him. I want to go back to Seth Rogers. Seth, I have so many questions for you, but we're running out of our time together for today. But I want to ask you this. I was listening to a statement of one of Mr. Proudfoot's wives. I believe there have been five. I'm not judging. I don't care who marries who or doesn't marry who. But this particular one named Nina stated that they had two children, one she had from a prior relationship, the second she had with him, and that the daughter had braces and he hit the daughter in the mouth and busted her mouth. Guys, remember, Mr. Proudfoot nor the mother have been named a suspect or a POI in this case. My question to you, Seth, did you know about any of that? I mean, she's on tape saying it. I watched her say I've it. I've seen it right Did here. you have any idea that there may have been other issues of violence with children? No, ma'am, I didn't. Okay, Seth, I'm going to it. That was all of it. I think they're going to pick up. I think there's going to be some more of it tomorrow. I'm just devastated hearing that, what I just heard. Uh, yeah, Nancy's on it. I think there's going to be a, I think there's going to be another part. I was, if it is, I'm a little bit confused, but if it is, uh, cause I think it was just going to be the voice tonight. And I think, because they said this part, then it will be the face next. I, I don't know. But anyhow, um, I wanted to play that and come on for y'all, for those that didn't hear. But uh, when I get my airplane mode, and I know my phone's going to go, <laughs> when it does, that's why I like to put it on airplane mode. Uh, but when it does, um, settles down, I will post that link to, um, uh, that call again where y'all get to it and uh, i'm seriously thinking about running that uh, live again with the interview that i did for those that didn't hear it with chris and katie because 
those that are new to my channel or just coming in that didn't hear it in full, then it can just be there for you. And again, you'll have a live chat, but I may you may not he hear me or seeing. I'll have my phone with me and I can um, type back and forth. So I may I may do that tomorrow. I have some errands to run, so I can be on my phone watching. And if it needs to get shut down, I guess Millie can shut it down. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> But I, I figure something out. I figure if that's what I want to do. But if you see me not talking or chatting or just coming on and that's what's happening and I run the Chris uh, Proudfoot live, that's what it is. Because I had thought about doing that for those that hadn't seen it. I don't know. Uh, I don't know yet. Um, there's just been things going on that people hasn't saw it in full. And I'm getting a lot of questions and stuff, and it is pretty long. So um, I can run my own stuff and not, and you know, so have a banner repeat. Yeah. Have, okay. So, yeah, I didn't know how to like, because I, I don't usually do that stuff. So just put repeat. Oh, okay. Like the blue banner, like this right here. Just put repeat. Just type something up and put repeat. Um, something like that. I'll, I'll figure it out. Put it. This is a repeat from. Okay. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> I just want y'all to know ahead of time or anybody that sees this. I'll do that. So maybe I'll do that tomorrow. I just want to give my mods a head up too. And um, yeah. Something like that. <laughs> but listen. We're here for one reason and one reason only. Well, all the victims, but we're here for Sebastian. Please don't forget him. And, um, you know, if you have any information on him, you think you see him. There's a couple of people who think they spotted him. It's very possible. Get a good look. Good look. Very possible. You never know. Um, call 1-800-TBI-FIND. They're out searching. They'll probably have a search tomorrow, they said. Um, I know Seth is doing his own personal searches um, every day. Um, Ellie, hopefully they'll do another search tomorrow. Uh, I know Equa searches there on the ground with boots on the ground. They've been in Trousdale County today. Uh, there's some places over in Sumner County. Um, you know, things are happening. Things are happening. So hopefully they really are not leaving any stones unturned. Hopefully they'll find him. I know his daddy's going to find him one way or another. So just keep praying and uh, we'll see. But I love you. I thank you all. I appreciate you all. And uh, go watch Justin on TikTok. But it's not TikTok. He is on TikTok. It's confusing. But he is on YouTube. Go watch that because I'm fixing to go watch it and rewind. And Justin, Justin, for all, if you have not seen that, they just said, Seth said some devastating stuff about um, Sebastian on there that's come out so please y'all go watch that i've never watched him before but i heard he's pretty good so i don't know i'm gonna watch it for that reason i love y'all have a great night i stand with sebastian i stand with summer monkey i stand with all victims no matter if they're missing or not yes and trigger warning definitely Thank you. Y'all have a good night. Love you all.